Senator Peter Mills. There. It's good to see you here tonight. Um, we've got, uh, this takes me back many years. Um, in the mid-1970s, and I was chair of the Republican City Committee, I, was, I had the pleasure of following in the footsteps of uh, Howard Dana, who had been the chair before me, and it was just as tough then, I think, to elect Republicans from this city as it is today. It's a challenge. Demographics are very uh, difficult to overcome. I was, um, I think of myself in some ways as the poster child for the two Maines. Uh, my mother was born on a potato farm up in Arista County. My dad was, con I'm told, was conceived in Stonington, but born in Farmington. And uh, I, they met somewhere in Colby College, and I uh, was the product of that union. Eight of my great-grandparents were born here, except for one. Uh, he was born up in Pugwash, Nova Scotia. This is a remarkable place to grow up in. Uh, I spent... Uh, through the fifth grade up in Farmington, and then we moved to Portland, or the Portland area, rather. I went to King Junior High School, Gorham High School. The Navy gave me a scholarship to Harvard. I spent five years in the Navy during the Vietnam era, and uh, came back here to law school, practiced law here in Portland for nine years, and then moved up to Skowhegan in 1982, where I've been practicing ever since. Then something possessed me. In about... Uh, Fifteen years ago, a seat opened up in Somerset County, and I decided to run for the state senate. And I had spent, up to that point in my life, I had spent all of my time practicing law, representing Maine people, representing Maine businesses, people who uh, sell and make popsicle sticks, tongue depressors, New Balance shoes, paper. You name it. I had represented people in some business or other. I then started traveling in 1995, the 45-mile commute from Skowhegan down to Augusta, and I realized very soon that I'd entered a strange world, a world where uh, the very idea of profit and loss or accountability or transparency is foreign. Maybe this point is best illustrated by a little story. I came down a couple of years ago to meet Mitt Romney because he was at that time running for president. And we met somewhere in, uh, in a hotel room in, in, uh, in Portland. And he was telling about what it was like to become the governor of Massachusetts for someone who had not been in politics before to, to become the governor of Massachusetts. And he said, I had a very clear desk. I had lots of aids and help and assistance. He says, after two or three days, I got curious. I said to my staff, where are my reports? And they said, what did you have in mind? He says, well, you know. He says, we're putting people in jail. We're educating children. We're helping people on welfare. We're building roads. Don't I get some reports of this activity? The guy was looking for his profit and loss statements. And they were not there. He was living in a different world, a world where P&L and those kinds of regular reports that you get every day if you're in business were missing. Everybody in the normal world looks at their revenue statements from the week before, the month before, the year before. They're constantly making comparisons, doing cost analysis, profit and loss statements. We live in a capitalist system by looking at numbers and figures, and accountability is built into the way we live, those of us who are in business and who represent businesses. Not so in state government. For the past 15 years, I have journeyed back and forth from one world to the other, and the contrast is disturbing. But it does not need to be that way. It wasn't that way under Romney in Massachusetts. It is not that way in Maryland under their present governor. It is possible. In fact, it's required, it's mandatory for this state to succeed to implement a number of ways of keeping track of results and outcomes rather than merely the process. And it can be done. I've made a study of it for the past 15 years that I've served in the legislature. People like Solomon Miller, Richard Rosen, Republicans like that have been asking the right questions for a long time 
And until you put a chief executive in the job who wants those questions answered, the people of Maine will remain out of touch with where their tax dollars are going. We're spending right now $29 million a year at the Dorothy Dix Hospital in Bangor to take care of 54 people. There are 350 state workers living and working there. And the reason that hospital is open and running at a deficit of 10 or 15 million dollars a year is because the governor is from Bangor. Plain and simple. It took us 20 years to figure out that we didn't have to pay 15 dollars an hour to have people put liquor bottles into paper bags at green front stores. But when you put the light of day onto those cost centers, when your chief executive asks those questions and gets the right answers, you can shame at least the blue dog Democrats in voting we're into voting with Republicans and doing the right thing and bringing costs under control. It can be done. And guess what? If you're the governor, the Democrats who may continue to control the legislature, let's hope they don't, but if they do, if you're the governor, they can't stop you from shining that light because you control the people with the numbers. And we haven't had that control since Jock McKernan left in 1992. We need it back. The state of Maine needs it back. Those of us who live here and want our children to live here desperately need a Republican governor in the Blaine House, and we are not going to see the good days return. This is a crucial election. Now listen. Fifteen years ago, they did redistricting up my way, and they took Somerset County, and they wrote it off as a Democratic safe seat. That was the deal that was made. Dave Emery was negotiating for the Republicans, and I forget who was doing the Democrats. I ran for that seat in 1994, and I took it. And I've held that seat for 13 out of the past 15 years. I had to take two years off because of term limits. But what they didn't understand about my county is that Somerset County in 1992 voted more heavily for Ross Perot than it did, for, than did any other county in Maine. And of course, Maine went for Ross Perot more heavily than other states. The key to winning, and this is what I'm here to explain, the key to winning for Republicans to win in Maine, and we're demographically challenged, not only here but everywhere else, the key is to know how to appeal to the independent voter. And that's what I've been doing for the last 15 years. I've made an art form out of it. Charlie Webster is saying, listen, we need to appeal to the man with a, or the woman with a dinner pail. We need to reach out to working people. I represent people who work at New Balance and Savvy and Madison Paper, and backyard farms. In October of election year at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm at the factory gates pressing the flesh with those folks and I have persuaded them year after year after year to vote Republican. And I can do that in the general election in 2010. Just watch me. Last time out, four years ago, every newspaper that editorialized on the topic said that we would have controlled the Blaine House if I had been the nominee four years ago. Give me the chance. Give me that chance and I will not disappoint you. Thank you very much.